Oh, yeah. Ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. But then later there's running and then screaming. The world has just changed so radically and we're all running to catch up. How can we possibly have the slightest idea of what to expect? With the best intentions. Some of the worst things imaginable have been done with the best intentions. Dr. Malcolm. I have to share a few campfire stories with my uncle. You can convince the Washington Post and the skeptical inquirer of whatever you want. But I was there, I know what happened, and so do you. I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should. Hello, welcome to the November slash December issue of Jurassic Minutes, where we'll discuss recent movie, toy, and franchise news for the Jurassic series. I'm Brad. I'm Dave. And we're back after this little bit of a hiatus to uh, to really discuss some great news. Uh, we've got a look at the uh, new DLC for Jurassic World Evolution that uh, has piqued my interest to finally get out and buy the game. We've got some more casting news for Jurassic World 3, and we have a working title for the film as well. But all that and a little bit more coming up uh, on today's show. David, happy Thanksgiving, or late Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I remember this week that uh, five years ago, 2014, for uh, Thanksgiving that year, the uh, Jurassic fandom got some interesting news, and that was the teaser for uh, Jurassic World. Well, there was the mm-hmm. teaser of the teaser, then the teaser trailer. So, Oh, yeah, it did. It really did. It was, I don't know, I mean, at the time, I kind of remember being kind of like, kind of iffy about the idea of a teaser for a teaser for a tease for a trailer but i mean that's kind of the way we're going these days so well i they didn't they didn't do the teaser for the teaser but we got the teaser for force awakens that same weekend as well so oh yeah right the internet blew up that weekend <laughs> for more ways than one but uh yeah we've got some uh some news to talk about now that um has got the fandom buzzing all over again for uh, more ways than one Mm-hmm. But, um, again, how do you know they're all female? Has somebody yeah. got in the park and pull up the dinosaur skirts? But before we get to that, I'd, we weren't going to discuss this because it wasn't really Jurassic related, but I've been watching the uh, Disney Plus as the world according to Jeff Goldblum over this last week, and uh, I, I'm sorry, John, but I really love that man. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, he's so energetic, he's just... Ah, oh, he's awesome. And the, um, one of the episodes there, he's uh, looking at barbecue and grilling and that sort of stuff, and there's a lot of Jurassic references in there, so... Um, <laughs> oh, that's the one where he's on Hawaii, isn't it? Uh, he lives there, doesn't he? No. Does he? I'd, he's he, he's at home. Um, most of the, most of it's North America, like the down the mm-hmm. south of the big, the big grills and that sort of stuff, so... I'm sure there's uh, episodes where he filmed in Hawaii, but... I'm not. I haven't seen them yet. I haven't seen the whole series yet. There's still a few more to see, but um, he's sort of been jet setting around <laughs> around the world, mm-hmm. looking at different things. So um, yeah, I haven't actually been watching the series myself. So well, you love one episode. He teams up with Indiana, uh, Indiana Jeans to go searching for old old miners' jeans, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just Jeff Goldblum being Jeff Goldblum, and it's it's awesome. And. Mm-hmm. In one episode, it makes me think we never got the same on an aircraft carrier or a spaceship. We did sort of in Resurgence, but just him wandering around a, a, a naval naval ship is uh, quite humorous. Yeah, I, I did grab Disney Plus, so I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, it's I think it's a case of there's so much content at the moment that it's just going to take time to <laughs> see it mm-hmm. all. That's the, uh, the biggest issue I've got at the moment. Which reminds me, I've got a new episode of The Mandalorian to watch. Um, <laughs> Dave, we better hurry up. <laughs> ready to uh, ready to tackle some uh, Jurassic news? Sure. We've made living biological attractions so astounding that they'll capture the imagination of the entire planet. Some recent news that's only come out the last couple of weeks. Uh, Jurassic World 3 has been announced to be filming under the title of Arcadia. Which everyone would know that was the name of the uh, the ship that took the animals off Isla Nublar in Fallen Kingdom. It uh, joins the uh, working titles we've had so far for Jurassic World, which is Eptide, and uh, Ancient Futures, which of course was Fallen Kingdom. I find it really odd that they've announced this so early when it's supposed to be in place to keep the public uh, unaware of what's being filmed, where and when. Mm-hmm. 
unless this is some sort of a uh, a ruse, especially after some fans were caught trying to or breaking in or trespassing in UK with the uh, the Lockwood Mansion set and everything there. I'm just wondering if this is being put up as a bit of a charade to keep fans going to places where maybe they're not filming. It very well could be. If only because, like you said, there was a they, the uh, last production on Jurassic Park had massive problems with um, basically set security where people were going into the sets and, like, I mean, just normal people. I mean, they would just go in there and take pictures of the sets and of the um, CGI or the practical stand-ins that they would later CGI over and statues that they were being put into the... Uh, um, uh, the Lockwood Manor set, and it was just ridiculous, you know? Yeah, and it's... While well, it's cool to see some of that stuff behind the scenes, it needs to be left for behind-the-scenes material now where it's done properly, because seeing the Stegosaurus and some of those animals, the mock-ups in their, in their cages, like, it just... There's a small section of the fan community that just suddenly becomes outraged because it looks fake and all this mm-hmm. without knowing the full story. Um... And I'll, I'll admit, when uh, when a couple of those tourists went on to the, uh, the army base in Hawaii and we seen that ruined Main Street set, I, I got hyped pretty big. And <laughs> um, some of that ruined stuff, Main Street and that in Fallen Kingdom, um, I was excited to see, but it got me too excited for the film before it came out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's... Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think... Ancient Futures, oh, Arcadia itself has got anything to do with the film. We have talked before about possibly the Arcadia not being the only ship that took animals off the island, but I don't think this ties into that at all. No, I doubt that as well. A first little uh, hint at what's to come for Jurassic World 3. Um, I'd have to go back now and look and find out when exactly we realised it was called Fallen Kingdom and not going under the title Ancient Futures. I think it was after it wrapped filming i'm just wondering how far that they the revealed that we yeah the time yeah it'd have to be would have to have been before the february before the teaser Mm-hmm. anyway all this is uh all this grain of salt there's going to be a lot more news about this coming out um they've uh, added vancouver as one of the filming locations as well so for the first time jurassic franchise is going to be filming up in the north after what they've done with ireland and battle at big rock they could say mm-hmm. they're filming in Antarctica, <laughs> and <laughs> I wouldn't believe that we're going to see snow. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're good at uh, good at um, deceiving <laughs> deceiving us with uh, mm-hmm. some of this stuff. So, yeah. Well, the other thing is we don't exactly know if it's going to be um, if it's going to be like sets, like using just some. Um, interior shots in Vancouver if they're actually filming in the course of the city itself. Remember um, we got the news of them filming in London uh, early on for Fallen Kingdom only to find out later that it was actually Pinewood Studios specifically and that they were just filming uh, a few exterior shots around the studio and um, mostly set building there. Mm. Yeah, and I think at the time too it was... I think there were, um, there were some people worried that with um, what came after that, The Last Jedi, um, whatever the last Bond was, Spectre and mm-hmm. Jurassic uh, Fallen Kingdom all filming at Pinewood, there'd be issues there, but all three films are coming out. Um, and now we're about to get our last Bond. It's film, it finished film, it filming. Rise of Skywalker's finished filming, so this uh, film will pretty much have Pinewood to itself unless something else is starting there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, Rise of Skywalker actually, I think, comes out yeah. next week. Or... It'll be just out before this uh, comes out. Yeah. Uh, and I'm excited to go and see it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I suppose the other thing is, too, with going up to Can- um, Canada, um, a lot of um, a lot of shows, a lot of sci-fi shows, a lot of stuff sort of that films in Canada, you get mm-hmm. a lot of that um, Pacific Northwest sort of forest and stuff like that so mm-hmm. it could be just an extension onto the redwoods or just more of um dinosaurs out in the in the in the natural environment and sort of those thicker forests up north 
Yeah, good. But, I mean, personally, I'm just not getting my hopes up too much. I mean, then again, they could not even... I mean, they could go to, like, a completely different spot and completely fool us. I remember when we talked about um, uh, Battle at Big Rock, they had discussed that they had went to... What was this? Ireland. I, outside Dublin, they had the Redwood Forest. I'm like, Redwood Forest in Ireland? What are they talking about? <laughs> Yeah, yep. But they uh they start filming in February, I believe. So mm-hmm. we uh, we won't have long before we start to see some more some more news coming out of uh, Jurassic World Three, now mm-hmm. named Arcadia. Uh, no, oh, um, I did hear that one of the supposed locations for I think it was from Real Real Tours was possibly returning to. Oahu or Kauai or Hawaii. There are, you know, so places there's going to be a Hawaii union. Yes, I did see that on their Facebook page. That was mm-hmm. um, they announced that yeah, the film something was going to be returning. Mm-hmm. Personally, got my fingers qu- crossed for uh, Costa Rica. That's mm-hmm. something I've kind of always wanted to see. Was um, like some mainland attacks, like what we got in um, the books. Yeah, definitely. More than what, more than just the um, the U.S. sort of animals running around wild there. Maybe, maybe with the um, with the explosion or with the volcano on Ubla, maybe some animals did manage to swim offshore or something. <laughs> Imagining a brachiosaurus walking onto the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't googled. I went. Oh, it's Pacific Ocean. It'd have to be deeper than eighty feet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Now, now I'll just have a shot of a yacht or something sailing by a brachiosaur head and going, what the hell is that? <laughs> Sticking two feet out of the water. Um, yeah, I don't, Fallen Kingdom, like, the only thing they went back there for was to film some the backing plates for Main Street and that. and the mm-hmm. Oh, no, they've done the whole gyrosphere thing there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, fingers crossed. Um, at this stage, Hawaii has been Costa Rica for the, the full expense of the movie's I'm sure Costa Rica would love for him to actually go to Costa Rica and film, but I don't know if uh, I don't know if the the jungle and the landscape would look the same this far out. But... Mm-hmm. You can convince the Washington Post and the Skeptical Inquirer of whatever you want, but I was there. I know what happened, and so do you. Some behind the scenes stuff now. Um, ILM have shared a lot of uh, behind the scenes stuff from the battle at Big Rock, which we were discussing before. Uh, a lot of the um, the concept art and that for the the pseudoceratops and the uh, the adult Allosaurus, mm-hmm. which um, shows we do have a there is a um, difference between the male and female animals as well, uh, mm-hmm. slightly longer horns and some colorations. And I believe it was uh, Legacy Effects actually did the, um, but I think we talked about that right that they did the animatronics on the film. I'm pretty sure we mentioned that during the uh, yeah during the reveal of it. Yeah, it was legacy effects that come in. I'm just trying to see here. I'm pretty sure they they said they were excited to return to Jurassic franchise. So because like they only done the uh, they did the Indominus Rex in Jurassic World, and that was they went didn't do anything in Fallen Kingdom at all, did they? I think it was a different production house for the CG. Yeah, it was Neil Scanlon yeah. who uh, who had previously worked heavily on. Um... Jurassic Park, not uh, on Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So there's, there's a behind the scenes video here to go through, um, looking at some of the stuff and how they uh, how they brought the short film to life. Which, yeah, that that adult Allosaur looks a lot better than what we got in Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> oh, definitely agree. <laughs> I haven't I haven't got Jay's opinion, but I can definitely I definitely assume he uh, agrees with that as well. Let's do this one at a time, shall we? Getting back on the Jurassic World 3, air quotes, Arcadia train for a moment, um, Colin Trevorrow uh, tweeted out something, a little eight-second video this uh, past week, just simply work, with uh, him holding a remote control and working a uh, animatronic head. Mm-hmm. On the head itself, it's there's a lot of speculation out there of what this animatronic could be. It almost looks like a little Brachiosaurus or something, just with the, the crest on it, mm-hmm. but... I was thinking Corythosaurus. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, because Edmontosaurus didn't have the crest, did it? 
No, no, no I don't think it had any crest. The yeah. toy version does. For, I, <laughs> I believe that was something that was recently discovered, though. Oh, okay. So yeah, we're um definitely looks like animatronics are back back for uh, the third film. Um, mm-hmm. Some real eager eye fans have picked up um, some stuff in the background, namely a small silhouette of a uh, of what looks like a little carnival. I, it's almost looks like a raptor. There's some comparison photos here in another article um, mm-hmm. of it and what a raptor would look beside it. Yes, there's some alterations, maybe a different version of the raptor, but I was thinking raptor as well. Yeah, looking at the size, it's only about um, it's only about three to four feet tall, so it is a it is full size mock up behind what they're doing here. So again, this is this is very early news. I'm sure we'll see more of it. Or we'll see what they want us to see about. I'm sure there's no mistaking it being there. Um, they would have looked for, looked over that video a hundred times before they posted it online <laughs> to make sure there's nothing getting out that they didn't want uh, released. So animatronics back, more animatronics. I. I did love the uh, the use the, the raptor they built with blue for Fallen Kingdom was fantastic. It was just a shame whenever they went back to the CJ model, there's still that little bit of a gloss, a gloss mm-hmm. on it. But oh, yeah, oh, Stiggy Mullock, okay, yeah. Um, oh, it's a different head shape anyway. Yeah, I'm sure they could put anything on top of <laughs> top of that frame. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we'll uh, again with filming starting next year, we'll uh, hopefully get a lot more tweets from Colin and crew with uh, what they're working on. I really hope we get a behind-the-scenes video, much like we got for Fallen Kingdom with them working the animatronics. I think with Claire was in the uh, the Drivesphere roller coaster and stuff like that, just to show how much of this um, this stuff's been done for real and not CG. Mm-hmm. That's a man. Ian's not gonna like this. David, what would you say if I said that uh, two of the fan favorite cast from uh, <laughs> Fallen Kingdom were returning? I'd be excited. Unfortunately, for some. Um, I don't know. I'll have to see what the story is. Uh, Zia and Franklin uh, signed up to return. Of course, Justin Smith and Danielle Penita mm-hmm. uh, coming back for the third film to join Bryce and uh, Chris Pratt. So I think it's um, I think it's good we're getting some of these casts returning. It's it's something that um, I had an issue with Fallen Kingdom not not bringing more of the uh, Jurassic World cast back in, especially if you're going to continue the story and have Owen and Claire uh, in the film. Because I'm pretty sure there wasn't... Owen and Claire were the only returnees, weren't they, in Fallen Kingdom? I no think one... so, yeah. Yeah, there was no one else from Jurassic World. <laughs> Poor Barry died in the lava, in that log, <laughs> still four years later. <laughs> what do you reckon? you happy to see these guys back? I know a lot of the fans aren't. But I personally am just because I kind of liked the characters. Maybe it's a little bit because I think uh, Daniel Panetta is kind of cute. But that's <laughs> beside the point. <laughs> that's a, that's a natural natural thought. Um, I suppose to her character, I know it's been. I don't know if it's confusion or blind or or what there is with some um, some fans like the whole paleo veterinarian thing and not ever working on a dinosaur where. We, we've talked during the, the Jurassic Park for a minute about Grant, about paleontology in the real world and what the world looks like in a post-Jurassic world age. Mm-hmm. And I think this sort of adds to that a little bit by, yes, I like have mentioned before about Jerry Harding that being vets and stuff and having to learn about uh, how to treat dinosaurs, the differences and all that. Um, even just simple stuff like tranquilizing and everything else. We've seen those issues in the Lost World with <laughs> getting the uh, the male Rex back to the mainland, but it's only it's only uh, natural that InGen Jurassic World or Maserati would have scholarships or training to get the next um, the next wave, the next uh, the next lot of vets coming through for the park, especially if they're going to increase animals. And we know Hammond wanted to do it. We don't know if Maserati had plans for a Jurassic World, Europe, China, Japan, uh, anything like that. Granted, the park had been open for 10 years and there was no word in the film that that was going to happen, but um, you never know, <laughs> especially with the attendances and that they were getting. Mm-hmm. We can charge anything we want, 2000 a day, 10000 a day, and people will pay it. And then there's the merchandise. I can personally... Donald, Donald, this park was not built to cater only for the super rich. Now yeah, to probably my favourite news of the month, and... Uh, the news that made me go out and spend some money and get uh, Jurassic World Evolution. Uh, 
we have started getting some videos of a new DLC coming out, uh, titled Return to Jurassic Park uh, for the game. We did see some early videos and that, uh, and some photos of the uh, original Jeep and the original Brachiosaurus skins. And then we started getting some more little hints and uh, clues and tidbits. Um, an aviary, which was constructed very much similar to uh, what we've seen in Jurassic Park 3. Um, mm-hmm. More of the design, not the fact that it was just a dome <laughs> and round without the uh, the canyon. But as uh, more stuff uh, come out, and then in this last week the DLC come out itself, and fans have been snapshotting all sorts of things from uh, from it. I think before it was released, David, you shared some uh, photos that we got for uh, some of the reskins of the animals, mm-hmm. and and one one fellow in particular that looks fantastic. Yeah, there's uh, several that I thought looked absolutely amazing. The um, the raptors, of course, they got the male and female from the um, first from the female from the first movie, the male from the second, as well as the male and female from the third. And I think those all look fantastic. The um, the models for them are all unique. They're not just reskins. Yeah, that was one thing I was definitely happy to see. It wasn't just the same body and just different colors on it. Mm-hmm. And then there's the T-Rex, which there's the <laughs> male, which looked absolutely amazing. It looked like they, they took the maquette and put it right into the game. It looks incredible. And the doe, the fem- the Lost World female, looks equally amazing. And there is also a um, image of the Jurassic Park 1 fem- female skin, which is one of the alternates. I didn't get a really good shot of it, so I didn't really look. I couldn't really tell. But I'm looking forward to see more pictures of that in the game. I've seen one photo of that 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 model for the original Rex, and she seemed a little bit. Anemic, like the uh, the Fallen or the Jurassic World mm-hmm. or Fallen Kingdom one. I I don't know if I don't know if that was a re, a re, a full reskin, not a remold of the, uh, the Rex itself, but it just she didn't seem as plump as what she was in uh, in Jurassic Park, especially when she's mm-hmm. hunting those Gallimimus. Yeah, I think that's really something that movies that since the Lost World have really kind of failed with the Rex is kind of getting that weight distribution right, you know. Mm-hmm. And we also saw images for the Brachiosaurus, the, both the Jurassic Park 3 and the Jurassic Park original variant. Mm. Um, let's see what else. Oh, the compies. There, uh, we saw the compies. Those look amazing. A few different colors on them, too. Yeah. It was good to see. And we got the uh, the not-so-sick Triceratops as well. More of that uh, brownie cover with the spots on it. Mm-hmm. Lost World Stegosaurus, which is good, tail up in the air as it should be. Yeah, actually, I saw some uh, somebody I think it was Engine Collector on uh, Instagram already put up a already uh, set up his Lost World on Instagram. One of the pictures he posted was a Stegosaurus herd in the middle of the redwoods, and I couldn't tell if it was next to a creek or a oh. pond that he had, and it looked it just looked fantastic. Wow. Wow, you have to send me that photo later. <laughs> yeah. And I also saw they had the Jurassic Park 3 Pteranodon. Yes. And then as a, as a reskin, I think it's the jungle skin variant, they have the Lost World uh, Pteranodon. Yeah, of course. <laughs> with the uh, with the aviary coming to evolution, there's also the uh, the Pteranodons coming as well, which, mm-hmm. again, is great to see in um, both versions that we've seen in the films. Got the parasol office there as well from the Lost World. Mm-hmm. I'd assume there'd be a male and female, like the greener colour that we see from uh, Jurassic Park as well. With that, I haven't seen photos of it, but we well, you also get the uh, the work uh, worker village. I wish um, <laughs> the visitor centre uh, mm-hmm. as well, and uh, the raptor pen or raptor holding pen. Yeah, um, I've also seen um, uh, what was it? It was um, uh, crap. Give me a second. Oh, uh, the vehicles. The vehicles are the original Jurassic Park Tour, Tour uh, Ford F- Ford Explorer, and the Jurassic Jeep. Mm. Well, that's yeah. <laughs> uh, we we talked about some of the great stuff. There is some uh, grumblings amongst the fandom now with uh, with those explorers. By the sounds of it, they couldn't get the Ford license to have them actually be Ford Explorers. Mm-hmm. As 
there's some manipulation there. They're a little bit shorter in the rear and don't have the Ford badges on them, I think. Which, going all the way back to Jurassic World, we speculated why or when were we going to get an Explorer after the uh, the Legacy Jeep and that sort of stuff. And, the, mm-hmm. and it never come. And this might be why. Maybe Universal haven't been able to get Ford to uh, sign off yeah. on Explorer. Yeah, that seems to be the case, unfortunately, now with... I think Target has been disbanding the uh, Legacy if line. I think I doubt we'll ever get one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a shame. You're very, yeah. Pay more for the uh, Iron Studios one. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, yeah. speaking of, speaking of which, the Iron Studio Raptors in the Kitchen sound like they've been slowly shipping out from uh, the warehouses in Asia and. Sounds like that will be coming soon. Hoping to get mine before before the new year. Probably won't, but you know, hanging on happy for a, Christmas. Oh yes, it would be very <laughs> yes. One thing here, you know, I don't know if it's just a typo with the article, but um, it says here along alongside an aviary which draws heavy inspiration from the design we see occupying Isla Sauna within the second and third Jurassic Park films. Um, maybe that's just because they're mentioning oh, Isla Sauna, which was in the second and third, not the aviary itself. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, the way you read it, though, it does kind of sound like a typo, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Or some sort of autocorrect there's changed something. Yeah, instead of within, with, which is seen mm-hmm. in the second or third film. <laughs> so, yeah. Because yeah. I read them like, wait, <laughs> there's no aviary in the Lost World. I would have seen it. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but, yeah, as I said, I've. I picked up Evolution a couple of weeks ago and I've only played about 10 minutes of it, which was one of the reasons I didn't get it in the first place because I knew I wouldn't have a lot of time, but I'll um, I'll be definitely having a go, getting DLC very soon and having a bit of a play because there's been some photos and some videos of uh, fans recreating the the T-Rex breakout and stuff like that and it, it does look great. Mm-hmm. Being able to do it yourself. Uh, yeah, this, is, this has definitely been the thing I've been waiting for for this game, you know? Mm. Yep. No, it's definitely got fans excited. Mm-hmm. This new program's incredible. A few more years development and we won't even have to dig anymore. Where's the fun in that? Lastly, something else coming out that um, has some fans divided as well. Uh, Universal dropped a new motion comic that uh, has been coming out on YouTube. Much like uh, what we've seen with Battle of Big Rock, it's sort of expanding on what uh, what we've seen the animals doing post fallen kingdom out in the rear world the first one's called a rising tide which sort of features the mosasaurus and that uh it was a whoa wasn't it beach i think it was in hawaii um chasing the surfers in the uh in the surf that we've seen at the end of fallen kingdom but don't know don't know about these we also got a uh, second one's coming out called dinosaur crossing which is continuation uh, part two which uh has a triceratops and an ankylosaurus fighting on a roadway it's an interesting style I, I agree. I, oh, I haven't um, seen a lot of motion comics, so this might be the norm. But it's really jarring seeing, like, hearing the voices of people talking, nodding their heads, and not seeing their mouths move. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen? Have you watched these? I've watched like one or two, not all of them, but I've seen them used in like um, commercials and online advertising. So, yes, I can agree that the animation can be a bit jarring if you're not used to it. Yeah. Even some, even just some of the way they animate the animals, like the, the Triceratops and Ankylosaur fight, half the time the Ankylosaur, is, it seems like it has part scorpion. Its tail's being used like a scorpion, not swinging side to side. It's, it's going over its head instead, and it's like, that's that's not right. Um, <laughs> Reminds me of some of those older kind of um, Ankylosaurus versus Tyrannosaurus artwork where you see that the Ankylosaurus just swing its tail right over the over the top of its back and smash the T-Rex right in the head. <laughs> uh, yeah. Unfortunately, in these in the last few years, we haven't seen Uvert Universal sort of take or or recognize the fact that they've got a really popular franchise here and doing more with it. We got mm-hmm. Battle at Big Rock. We had the little snippets at the end of that film of what these animals are the um, hassles and issues they're causing out in the real world um, because of being free and coexisting with humans but 
I didn't think I didn't think a motion comic would would come along. We we know we've got um, Camp Cretaceous coming out in a couple of months' time. I think it starts in February as well. So um, set that's that's set to take place while and after the uh, the island's been evacuated from Jurassic World. So that's sort of out of the timeline of where we are now in the, in the main films. But I I don't really know if I want to watch <laughs> any more of it. <laughs> it. It intrigues me to see what 